One thing we were fairly averse to when we started out was getting highly mechanized. We did not have a four-wheel tractor for the first few years because neither of us are mechanically inclined. We were going to try to do it without it, but uh, eventually we realized that it, it wasn't going to work out. It was just too much uh, strain on our bodies. We couldn't do without it. We needed the bucket loader for loading the compost. We use it for soil preparation. Well, usually about the first or second week of April, the soil starts getting dry enough to be able to get in there and work it. We're always itching to get our first radishes and greens and whatever in the ground, so we keep close track of that and go out and test the soil every day or two. And that has to do more with moisture rather than temperature. I know some crops don't like to germinate in cold soils, but some of them don't have a problem with it. So as soon as we can get out there and get in the soil, we do. Our farm, I say we have two and a half acres. Matthew will tell you we have three. Part of that is because we use a permanent bed system. A certain percentage of our land is in permanent sod paths. It's basically a low-till system. Rather than plowing our whole field every spring and disking it or harrowing it and then planting into that completely prepared field, we've chosen just to prepare the sections that we're going to be planting in. We use a chisel plow, which is a long shank that goes into the ground, and a rototiller, and we prepare just the strips where we're planting. And the other strips are left as sod, uh, some of it's clover, some of it's grass, some of it's weeds. The reason we've chosen to do the permanent beds, we like that it's not complete tillage, it's a less tillage intensive system than, than preparing a whole field. It sort of makes it mentally easier to look at this one bed and say, how many crops can we grow in this one bed this year? For me, it, it really just conceptually makes a lot of sense. But also, uh, we pr feel like it preserves the fungi and bacteria in the soil, and they're better able to recolonize the areas we are planting in when we just disturb those areas. The soil ecology underground is really important, and the less of it we can disturb, the better. Typically our first step is to go through with our subsoiler, which we found very helpful in our type of soil, which can be fairly tight and it has fairly high clay content, and it's not a very deep soil. So what the subsoiler does is it goes through and rips a channel down in the middle of each bed, breaking up any kind of hard pan that's, that's formed over the past year through our tilling. It helps break up any compaction without turning over the soil which a typical plow does. So it'll go down 18 inches into the soil and really provide nice uh, drainage and space for roots to penetrate. No, I don't. We also use organic fertilizer. We have been using that for the past few years, bagged organic fertilizer. So we do put that down before we rototill. And after that's done, typically we come through with our rototiller. For the past uh, five years, we've used uh, a BCS walk-behind two-wheel tractor with a rototiller attachment. That's something that we may be looking to change in the future. We may be getting a tractor-mounted PTO rototiller. Probably would be more efficient and do a better job for us. We have in the past limed our field. We don't do that every year. We have also put different soil amendments in like uh, green sand and rock phosphate to bring those levels up to where we like them. But now that the levels of uh, potassium and, and phosphorus are, according to our soil sample results, they're pretty much where we want them. And our pH is at a good level too, so we don't have to do that. It's mostly just compost and organic fertilizer. So when we purchased the farm, we looked at the soil survey books and we did speak to a cooperative extension agent. Because we knew the soil was fairly poor, we knew we'd be buying a lot of compost. We figured on a small scale you can improve the soil, but soil has been an ongoing issue for us. We're really fortunate to have a local compost facility, an industrial compost facility. It's taking a lot of waste out of the waste stream and turning it into compost. We spread compost for the first several years just from the back of our pickup. Then we, uh, with another farm, bought a manure spreader and we used that. 
we didn't have a lot of cash when we started and it was really nice to only put our compost that we were spending a lot of money on right on that spot that we're always going to plant in rather than spreading it over the whole field. We've started to spread less compost than we did originally. We spread a lot of compost at first and uh, we feel like the organic matter in the soil has improved that we don't have to add it every year anymore. They have two grades of compost and we've stopped buying the cheaper grade because we just needed so much and started to try to buy that more expensive, better composted stuff. And so it's been a nice change to see ourselves progressing. All soil needs fertility, but we want to really focus it on the spots where we're growing cash crops. <laughs>